Hello everyone and welcome to this C++ Primer course. The whole purpose of this course is to get people who have never touched C++ to understand some of the basics of C++ and get using it straight away. Now if you're interested in using C++ with Unreal Engine, there will be another series coming up soon which will be covering this as well. But I just wanted to give you this primer so you're not going in completely blind and seeing all sorts of weird symbols and what they mean. This is sort of to help you out at the very start. So if you're really comfortable with some programming in C++, this really isn't for you. But if you are new to it and want to pick it up, this is a great start for that. So this first episode, we're going to go through setting up a brand new project and talk about what are the things we see on the screen. What do includes mean? What are the different symbols we're seeing? What they mean? We're talking about that simple Hello World program and getting that going. So let's get started. To get started with our C++ project, uh, I've opened up Visual Studio and we're going to start off with an empty console app. So new project console app we're going to be using. Click next. I should name it my first C++ and we'll hit create. And that will create our project for us. And when you first open this up, you're going to be given the first C++ file and you'll see it says .cpp and here is a very simple hello world file. Now here we're going to explain the different elements you're seeing here, but let's first of all just run the program. To run a program inside of Visual Studio at least, you click up here to the play button. Hit this, it will compile it, build it and run it. And we should in a moment get a window come up in console saying hello world. And it's telling us that we've finished and we've exited. We can now close the window. So let's talk about what we're actually seeing here. Here we have includes and includes typically will go at the top of your C++ file. Includes are basically going to contain where you're reading your information from. So where you're reading functions, variables, and everything else from. These are what we call libraries. So here we've got one include, which is the IO stream. And this is a, a default library that we have inside of our Visual Studio to read and be able to use this C out function here. Okay. Now next we up, we have the int main function. This is the main loop or main call of our program. So the way it happens when you run a program in C++, it's going to look for and run the .cpp file of the project itself. So it'll look for the same name as the project. It will then run the main function inside of it. And main functions should always return an int. So they always return a integer. A value. This is the return value. You will see different functions in the future cover this it will go into void, int, float, everything else as well. And main is the one that runs first. And whenever you declare a function, you can know it's a function because it has these curly braces afterwards for our uh, function parameters. Main has no parameters, so therefore it's just empty. After that, we have the actual content of the function, which is handled by and um, book en book ended by these curly brackets. These will bookend and define what the function is. And here we've got the single line in our function. The C out object, which is what this is, uh, belongs to the standard namespace, which is what this STD stands for. STD is a namespace that uh, is really there for us to use. And it basically is a namespace is a collection of uh, files and uh, and things like that that are sort of sort of like collected together and and kept together in that one in this one is called std um if you were to think about it in sort of a windows explorer think of it like a folder okay it's, it's containing all the things that it needs to use so the standard folder std folder has the c out um object and that object can use the print you'd be used to print out some text in this case we're printing out hello world with a slash n a slash n is just a new line whenever you do see a backwards slash like this this means an escape character meaning that the next character is going to do an, a special uh character a special thing okay in this case n is indicating a new line so for example if i were to put in another line in here got std colon colon c out and here you can see, by the way, all the STD library stuff. We can see all that stuff in here. Um, we can go C out. 
and we can define it as saying uh, I am a program and uh, that's a much mark there now every new line of code you add you have to make sure you end it with a semicolon this indicates to the computer compiler that that's the end of the instruction and it's going to make a new instruction after that so semicolon and that should all be okay and we're going to hit play again and we should see that difference happening up here hello world i am a program done okay now the other lines we've seen here are what we call comments comments are there just to like make notes for yourself and for anyone else who's reading your code they do not get compiled and do not get run into the program and you've got two different main ways of doing comments you've got these double uh, slashes to indicate this and it turns it green in visual studio uh, you can also um, do uh, slash asterisk to create a block here so anything in between these will count as a comment as well so this is a comment okay and i said it's just there for making notes and keeping things organized because it can be a bit hard especially when you've got loads and loads and loads of files and loads of code uh to know exactly what is what um so it might be easier for you to type it in and explain yourself so next we're going to do is going to show you how to do a variable okay and so we can define a variable by first of all saying what type it is and then setting it to a name so in here we're going to set one up here we go int and we're going to call this one a um uh, we'll call it custom variable and we'll make it equal to um five okay and don't forget to end the line with a semicolon to end, end, uh, to end that out there and now if i want to print that value out i can just put in a standard cl and put in uh, rather than putting in uh, quote marks but it's not going to be a string we want to print out we actually want to print out the variable itself we can just do custom and you should see it come up with uh, the IntelliSense thing come up like that and we can end the line there and we've finished we can just end it with return zero to indicate the return of this ending here typically on the end of a main you want to put in return zero to indicate the program's finished okay and so we can hit build again and now you can see hello world i am program five okay and so we can do this with any type of variable we just need to define its type before we assign its name okay and there's some basic things we can do as well including uh some simple arithmetic so for example uh, we can go and define int value a equals uh, seven int value b equals eight and we can say on here let's put some new lines in here um so i'll put a new line here i'm just going to put in inside of the quote marks the uh backward slash n there and we'll make it see out this so now we're going to take value a and value b and add them together and they're going to print them to the screen now what i'm going to do is also add a new line to my custom variable output here and uh, to do that we have to tell it to do another special character now for this we have to put in another shifter which is what this is it's like a bitwise shifter um operation and we can now tell it to do something else at the end of it so basically think of it like you're pending to the end of it um i'm going to do the backward slash n there okay and i should add a new line to that for us we're then going to do a new integer called sum and we're going to make that equal to value a plus value b and now to print that out we'll just do std c out and tell it to print out the uh, we'll go the total is and then shift again and then put oh not uh, not that sorry to put in sum and then semicolon and whenever you do a, re uh, a main function it's a good idea to re do the actual return itself so get used to doing it uh return zero 
And it's returning zero because it needs an integer to return. And zero just means everything's been okay. Okay. So now if I hit the play button, we should see that compile. And now you can see here, hello world, I'm a program, which is these two lines. Five is showing the custom variable and new line. And the total is 15, which is adding the two values together and outputting the sum. Okay. And there you go. We've got now got our program started off. And in the next episode, we're going to start looking at variables. And in particular, looking at how we can use variable types, including the auto type, as well as the ints and so forth, to our so input data and display it on the screen. You can watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. You can find all my videos early before anyone else. Massive thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for the continued support. And I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.